throughout the rest of the trimester. It's called a capstone project, and you may be familiar with the term, or maybe you haven't heard of it. Um, it is sometimes called a capstone experience or a culminating project. In college, sometimes a thesis um, project is sort of very similar. It is a multifaceted assignment that serves as a culminating academic and intellectual experience for students, which is a really fancy way of saying that it's um, got different parts to it and it's going to sort of showcase what you've learned over the trimester. So it's a long-term investigative project that culminates in a final product. In your case, it'll be a slideshow. And it's designed to encourage you to think critically, solve challenging problems, and develop skills such as oral communication, public speaking, research skills, yada, yada, yada. You guys won't be doing any public speaking, don't, don't worry. <laughs> um, but uh, planning, self-sufficiency, and goal setting will be part of it. Um, I will be breaking it down into small bites so that it's um, a little easier for you to manage. And the first thing I want you to do is think about what interests you in the field of photography. Is there something you've always wanted to try? Are there certain things that you like to photograph more than others? So I have a couple of um, examples loaded right now in this um, assignment. And then there are a few others on the bottom here that you can take a look at as well. Um, what I want you to notice is that they start out with a title slide and it should include a photograph of your work and then it um, has a slide that tells what your topic is and what you are focusing on then you're going to do a little bit of research um, you're going to find one or two photographers who worked the um, or photographed things that you are interested in doing um, and you'll include some of their photos so this was Arden Carlton's um, from last trimester, I believe. Um, and then you are going to take some photographs of your own and you are going to annotate them, meaning you're going to label them um, to explain why they are good examples of your topic. Um, so her topic was outdoor and I believe light. Um, so it's a two part project. And um, I would take a look slow, more slowly at these when you have a chance. And then this is the reflection. So the last slide um, should include a reflection and your best image. So um, this one was uh, focused on coloring photographs with people um, that don't look staged and capturing emotions and personality. So this student focused on Richard Avedon's work, um, who's a photographer you'll be introduced to um, in the upcoming weeks. Um, so there are some of his um, examples. And then here are some of the photos. So you'll see that some of these slideshows have like one photo per slide. Some have a group of them. Um, and this was actually one photo. Evelyn put together a whole bunch of pictures she took into one format and added some text, which is actually pretty cool. Um, that's a possibility too. So showing emotion, playing with colors and light. Uh, I think that's a particularly stunning image. Um, some of these people were her mother, some were her fr friends, some are herself. And this one she took in Spain. So very thoughtful photos that um, you know have sens sensitivity to them. This one is a little humorous. <laughs> um, and then her conclusion. So this is a really fun one, Recreating Famous Pictures by Rachel Naylor. Um, I have some other photos I can share with you of students who um, recreated famous paintings that were just phenomenally done. Um, so this person doesn't have the explanation slide or anything like that. They jump right into their images. Um, and their friend John posed for all of these. Uh, so this on the left, this is Andy Warhol. Um, and, you know, focusing on lighting and props and setups. And it just did a wonderful job. 
Obviously, her friend doesn't have a beard, so that would be a challenge. But yeah, so you get the idea. So um, what you're going to do today, hopefully, at some point today, is um, click the blue submit button and in the text box answer the following questions. And if you want, you can copy and paste these questions right into the text box if that makes it easier. Um, each complete sentence that you give me that thoroughly answers the question gets two points. So there are actually three questions here. I need to know three things from you. The first is what will be your photography focus? So here's a list for you to choose from because this is a two-part project. We want the photography focus and we also want your subject matter. So question number two says tell me what your subject matter will be. And so that asks you to go to this themes list and take a look at all of these themes. And I think this is where it gets interesting because some of these themes are, um, they're very obscure on purpose, like mug shots. You can either take photographs of mugs, meaning the cups that you have coffee in, or you can set up mug shots as if you were um, a police photographer photographing people who are being arrested. Um, you know, so there are a lot of um, options in here. If you have questions about what some of the themes might look like, I've also given you a slideshow with examples. And not all of the themes are on here, but um, many of them are. So you can scroll through these examples. Some of, most of these I've tried to use as many student examples as I could. There's a lot of pictures on here, which is why it's taking so long to load. And there's a little bit of an explanation for each slide. So 24 seven is 24 photographs taken every day for seven days. And it can be of anything you want. And you don't have to compile them like this. This was just sort of like a lot of photos. Um, a collection are um, photographs that are all about the same subject matter. So like a whole lot of dance shoes or a whole lot of cars or a whole lot of sweaters. I've had so many wonderful things done that way. So you can just look through, um, these are all, um, almost all of these are student examples, action shots. And so this is going to require you to, you know, do a little bit of research. The third question asks me to tell me why you want to focus on these for your capstone. And we can conference individually if you have questions and you're not sure if something's going to work. Um, you can also submit it and I can give you feedback. And um, throughout the trimester, you will be um, learning more about some of those things that are on the list, the um, original list, like Boca. If you've never heard of Boca, we're actually going to do a little bit of that next week. Um, we'll do some, next week's unit, we'll start our lighting unit. So light, lighting techniques, light painting is a lot of fun. That's done in the dark with a flashlight. Um, but you would need a DSLR or a phone where you can adjust the shutter speed. Um, and which reminds me as well that um, if I, I can't, I, I've had one person ask if they can borrow a camera right now. And I'm hesitant to do that because I'm hoping when we're back after break on campus that we'll be able to use them in class. And if I loan them out, then I won't get them all back in time to do that. But I do have things like tripods and light reflectors and some, um, you know, spotlights and some colored gels too, which are really cool that you could put over the lights and get really interesting color effects on your images. So if there's something like that that you'd like to borrow, please let me know. Okay. So that's what you guys are going to try to get done today is figure out what, um, or in the next couple of days, figure out what you want to do for your capstone. So who has questions? I know I just threw a whole lot of information at you. Has anybody thought about what they might like to do? What are you thinking, Margaret? Kind of thinking of doing something with architecture and maybe like taking pictures in the dark because I live really close to town so I can go take pictures of all the cool buildings there. Yeah. Um, and I think like at night might be like a cool thing to experiment with. Do you have a DSLR? 
I don't, but I have one of the newest iPhones, so I can. I think I can adjust the shutter speed. Um, I think my dad's played with that. Yep, and then there are lots of apps that you can download for your phones that will mm-hmm. allow you to turn them into manual cameras. Yeah, some yeah. of them are free, and some you have to pay a couple bucks for, um, but they are mm-hmm. a lot of fun to experiment with. Yeah, yeah the, the, um, the one thing you have to be careful of is camera shake. You know, if, if you are using like a slower shutter speed to get dark images, um, it might be good to, to have like something to prop it on or a little cell phone tripod or something like that. Yeah, I think I can borrow a tripod from my dad. I think he has one. Cool. Um, that would be cool, yeah. Anybody else have any ideas about what they might want to do for the capstone? I would think about doing something you can do, like what Margaret was just saying, because she lives downtown. She has all of this rich information right there in front of her. If you want to do something like you want to do photos of the coast, but you don't live near the coast and you have to rely on somebody else to get you there, that might be more of a challenge. You are going to um, need to take photographs on at least three different occasions. So spread out throughout the trimester, um, rather than all do your whole photo shoot all at once, because one of the points of this is to get you taking a lot of pictures. Who else has some ideas? I'm putting you on the spot here. Who has questions about um, this list again? The um, let me present it again for you. Is there any way to access the list? Yes, it is on okay. the assignment. Um, okay. The introduction to the capstone proposals for this um, in this module, and so. Um, oh, both, okay, it's right there. Yeah, um, black and white's pretty obvious. Blur is kind of an interesting one. It, it relates to movement, showing movement in a photograph. Um, close up or macro, uh, you can get these wonderful little lenses that either snap on or are magnetic and will attach to your phone and they'll allow you to get within like an inch of something and take incredibly detailed close ups. I have one, um, it's called Photo Jojo. And it's a, it was a $25 close-up lens. Um, bokeh is, if you think about pictures of Christmas trees, and you know how sometimes the focus is changed so that um, the lights look like circles of color instead? That's kind of bokeh. Depth of field is having something um, in focus and something out of focus. So that would be like a short depth of field or a deep depth of field is when you're taking a photograph and everything all the way through it is in focus. And that relies on um, being able to change your aperture. So again, you would need either a DSLR or um, a way to adjust your camera using an app. Um, night photography, pretty obvious. Post-processing. Um, so. If you want to do post-processing as a focus, I would ask you to choose something specific about it because post-processing itself is like this huge range of things. Stop motion is getting really fast things to look like they are frozen in time. Um, and we do actually, we do a unit together on blur and stop motion. And then a wide angle lens, again, is something that you can um, either, you can have a an adjustment or another lens to put on your cell phone. The one that I have is a combination of wide angle and macro. Um, you just turn it over and, it, and it's a little different. Um, and so those are the ones that are kind of like the fisheye views where your, your, your field of vision curves and you can get some really cool effects with that. If there's something else that's another photography focus that you would like to do, um, feel free to propose it. Those were just sort of like the big categories that made sense to me um, that students have focused on in the past.
how are people doing with um, the first composition assignment? I think I've only seen about half of them. Are you able to find your folders all right and that kind of thing to submit them? So I'd really ask you to please ask me questions and please always go back after you've submitted something and look at the grade because there will be comments. Nine times out of ten there will be comments. Um, so if you if you pass in an assignment that's worth 20 points and you get 12 points, I don't want you to assume that, oh, my photos weren't good enough, you know. I want you to think, oh, I must have missed something, you know, and go back and look at the grade because you can always resubmit for more points. Um, and if I were seeing you regularly in class, I would like have a little list of this and I would, you know, just touch base with you personally. Um, but it's kind of hard to do that privately on a, a Google Meet. So check your comments. All right, and if nobody has any questions, I guess we're done. Or if you would like to just ask me a, a question personally, please hang on the line and everybody else can take a break before the next class. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank yep. you. Have a good day. Have Thank a good you. Day. Hi. So um, I was a little bit late because I now have a temporary computer. So I was trying to set up 